So this is the Hofner Ignition Bass, and if you're looking to get a similar sound out of your bass guitar, here are a few tips for getting that Tame Impala bass tone, or really it's more of the Paul McCartney Beatles bass tone, right? Well, hello, I heard my name. It's me, Paul McCartney. I'm young again. Oh, no, no, get out. Well, I just thought I'd come in for a chat, perhaps a cup of tea. Get the fuck out, Paul. Well, that's very rude, you know. Sorry about that. He's been wandering around the neighborhood lately. So tip number one for achieving this sound would be to use a light palm mute technique on your bass. And if you are using a pick, make sure to use something very bendy like this guy. What we're trying to achieve here is a sound of flat wound strings if you don't already have those type of strings on your bass. And I often use this technique even with flat wound strings just to give the bass a different sound sometimes. Tip number two to achieving this sound would be to get flat wound strings. And honestly, flat wound strings get you halfway there. But on some bass guitars, flat wound strings might not be a good option. Part of the reason why flat wound strings sound so good on this Hofner is the violin shape of the bass and the hollow body. Tip number three would be to get an outboard preamp. A vintage style preamp could elevate your bass sound tremendously, but they could cost thousands of dollars. Luckily, there are some affordable options. The one that I use is the Golden Age Project Preamp. It's modeled after a 1073 vintage Neve preamp. It sounds great on its own, but when you boost it, you get that harmonic distortion colorization that really makes a bass stand out, especially in your mixes. Okay, now let's talk about how to process your bass sound within your DAW. I'll do this in Ableton by using stock plugins, and then we'll go over it again using third-party plugins, which I use in my normal bass processing chain. So here we are in Ableton, and I've got this very chunky, healthy-looking waveform from the bass here. And this is uh, me pushing the bass through the preamp, and you could tell by how huge the waveform is. Here's what it sounds like. You get the idea. Let's go ahead and start processing this using Ableton stock plugins. So the first thing I'll do is open up an EQ. Now this is all very mix dependent, but it usually goes something like this. We'll do EQ, start with the glue or glue compressor, saturation, saturator, and then we'll end it off with another compressor. And I'll I'll go through all this here. So I would do something like this when it comes to processing a Hofner bass for this this style of tone, right? Usually you like to cut off a little bit of the lows. You don't want it too boomy. Start the compression around 5 dBs, what I usually like to do, get that makeup gain going. You could already tell that saturation is a big part of this sound, right? Because we're getting harmonic saturation from the preamp, and then we're just adding a little bit more digitally to help the bass stand out in a mix. And then this last part right here, we're gonna do a side chain to the kick is what we usually do in just about every song to give the kick drum space in your mix. of that ducking going on and uh, here's what it sounds like while my CPU is going a little crazy sorry about that but you get the idea right sounds great with stock plugins but let me show you my usual plug-in chain that I like to use. I really love the CLA-76. Keep that in mono. And then we can get a little fancier here with the saturation. We'll go with uh, Decapitator for Saturation by Sound Toys. This CLA bass plugin is the reason why I love it so much. It just, with this bass, the tone that I already get, once I slap this plug-in on with default settings, it just pops out of the mix. Part of that is this chorus effect, 
which you don't want to overdo and sometimes I just turn it off because I don't want like some weird phasing but it kind of sounds cool for this part and I really like to bump the saturation the distortion really cool that sub boost compression that alone gets me to at least for a demo I'm happy with that now I'll bring in the CLA 76 Now we could add some more saturation. You can add a crazy amount of saturation with this plugin, right? So I'm going to do just about 50% of the way, but let me show you what it sounds like on full wet. Got some of that low. Adding a subtle amount of saturation. And the glue compressor I like to use at the end to barely kiss that signal to just trim off anything. It's going to trim off the, the top parts of the waveform here, barely touching it. And then we'll go ahead and sidechain this again. One more plugin I actually use quite often, depending on the mix, but I think in this song it's not necessary, is this R bass plugin. You could really shape the tone of your bass with this. But for this song, I'm pretty happy with what I got here. Let me show you in context with the mix. And just for fun, we could sh I could show you how the art bass sounds on this track. So I think that's about it. If you enjoyed the video, let me know. If you stop by for the next one, then I'll see you then or I'll see you in another time.